Welcome back to the Matt Yasa channel, doing episode 10 of the Glass Science series. It's going to be a glass cannon. Right now, I'm just heating up a nice ring into this uh, one inch tubing, about four millimeters in thickness. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out two points. I don't pull points too often. Uh, usually I just use my snippers here to break it and as I'm pulling it up it just snaps the moment it touches the snipper wheel it's kind of weird I don't, I don't know why that happened but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and straighten up this shoulder and pulling points is a more classical method of breaking down the tubing and prepping it for later uh, stages of the process but I usually use the American method the attachment but for here, I'm just kind of getting that blow tube, which is in my right hand, and the remaining uh, blank is in the left. I'm just kind of straightening the blow tube up by focusing a lot more on the blank, uh, just because the blow tube is so thin that it would just start melting down pretty quickly. And then to straighten it, just rotate, 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 uh, maybe just a little bit of a pull. And I'll pull out one more point because the tube's a little long for the project. Now I try to keep the tube very centered in the flame. You'll see the flame kind of spills over the top and the bottom. And that's how you know that it's completely encapsulated in the fire and it's getting as much heat as you can put into it. And I know starting out, it can actually be hard to know if you're in the flame or not, just because from your front perspective, it's just hard to see what's going on. And beginners will actually hover the, the tube above the flame, not melting it at all. And it's not until they pass the tube back through the flame that they realize where they're at because the flame will change. And now I'll go ahead and start heating up the end. I'm gonna close it down so I can start thickening the entire tube up to start on the cannon. Now when I was thinking glass cannon, I thought this would just be the perfect video just because of how much a paradox that sounds. With a cannon, you're thinking heavy, powerful, you know, just this solid durability. And then glass, you know, you describe anything in glass, it's to be meant to be fragile, breakable. So it's, it's really just a great paradox there between the two. So I'll go ahead and grab the tweezers and pull out some of the excess glass at the end and close it up at the same time. And basically just doing this very slowly and consistently will pull those walls out all to the same thickness uh, with a little bit of a, a nub at the end. And I normally will melt down uh, the tips when I pull them out that thin just because they're you know much thinner than a needle. They'll very easily just pierce into the skin. I just want to say real quick, I hope you guys are really uh, enjoying watching the videos, you know, maybe getting something out of it, getting some knowledge especially if you're a beginner glass blower, because I know uh, funds can get pretty tight with a lot of the equipment and stuff you need. And you know, I think that honestly, if you're willing to put in the time and really put in the effort to just improve yourself, then you shouldn't be charged for that. You know, you don't have to lose something to gain something every single time. And to put some perspective onto that, uh, Murano is kind of considered traditionally to be the main hub of glass blowing. At one time they had a little bit less than 40% of the populace involved in the process. And then to be a skilled glass blower, uh, you'd be considered almost the same as royalty. Coming from royalty, uh, you'd get extra privileges. But then if you attempted to kind of export your trade, you know, share the secrets, like a lot of stuff I'm showing you here, uh, you'd be risking your life, you know, they would, or at least your hands. They really didn't want to risk those secrets getting out. You know, they wanted to maintain the monopoly on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and start thickening up these walls uh, to withstand the shock of the cannon. Um, I'm taking them about from a four millimeter to an eight or a nine millimeter. That's a, l a little bit less than half an inch at that point. Now I just wanted to just, just a note here that I do a lot of my work uh, one hand or, you know, switching between hands. Uh, but from here, you could have really just started with the punty and held it in both hands from the beginning. And that's something I will have to do here as it begins to thicken up and get heavier. Before I attach the punty, I'm actually going to pull out a little bit of that glass at the end. And this is good to do, especially for rods of color 
you'll just end up with uh, bubbles and little imperfections just because the ends heat up quicker or there's you know junk on them and now that I have that thick cannon section kind of preformed I'm gonna go ahead and start pushing a lot of heat into the rest of this blank get it down to a soupy almost like a gel consistency and then it'll almost want to flow right into the form of that cannon I'll have to puff a little bit into it to keep the blank from uh, collapsing down. I'm going to keep putting a good amount of heat into it, melting that blank, uh, raising up a little bit on one side, kind of having it flow down into the cannon. And now that I've reached about the target thickness I want for the cannon, I'll go ahead and put a nice even band into the tear point, and I'll pull out while puffing in and that'll keep keep the walls from caving in and it'll create this very very thin uh, chamber of glass and now it's thin and it's very weak it'd be pretty easy just to break it in half or break it off but a more proper method would be to pop a hole and then melt it off that'll just keep a lot of the glass debris and glass dust from getting everywhere in the studio and then I'll go ahead and melt it down too, just so you can see how quickly it just melts down into a little blob. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the end of the can piece, thicken up the wall a little bit, and then also form the uh, very tip. You can see it get uh, white hot and begin to condense down. I'm going to use the, the brass reamer to open up and form it a little bit. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I'll just be using a firework for the explosive part. You know, I'm not going to pack it like a real cannon would be. Um, and that just makes it easier in my part. And this is probably one of those videos I would uh, revisit later, especially once I have that bigger torch and I can get some bigger tubing. Then at that point, I might, I might actually make a real packed cannon. It'd be pretty cool. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the reamer here. You can see I'm pushing in there. Kind of just open it up as much as I can. And it's really starting to take form into that traditional cannon shape. Now a little bit of cloudiness did form on the barrel. That's from uh, a process called devitrification. It's when the molecules in the glass, which are normally amorphous solid, end up uh, crystallizing. It's not desirable for uh, pendants and marbles but in this case I think it just gives it a rustic look and now I'm just kind of pulling the glass out uh, a lot of it actually because it's so thick to make a hole for the fuse each pull brings that air bubble closer and closer towards the surface and once it gets close enough the walls will be so thin that you can just pop it open now there's actually a lot that's going on here. I wanted to point this out real quick and it seems pretty simple. It's just a hole. And here you can see the tweezers going inside the tube, which means I got it as about as thin as I'm going to get it. And now at this point with that really thin, thin area there and the surrounding area, very, very thick, just applying heat to that one area, a lot of things happen here. The hole pops open. It ends up larging in size, diameter, because uh, the area is re re relatively thin. And then once it actually reaches the thickness of the, the rest of the tube, it shrinks. It begins to shrink back down. So basically, by just holding it there, applying heat, not doing anything else, it uh, goes through like a three-step process. But now I'm going to kind of interrupt that process and stop applying the heat that way the, or else the hole would completely close back up and the walls would just thicken up to the surrounding areas. And I know that sounds kind of complicated, but if I phrase the question, why do some holes open up and some holes close when applying heat to them in glass blowing, then I guess that would, that would be the answer. And now with the cannon done, I'm sure you guys can guess what's coming up next. Now what does every cannon need? Well, almost every cannon. When going into the battlefield, you guessed it, 
wheels that's right a very heavy weaponry is this how are you gonna get it from a to b without uh some wheels so here we go starting on some wheels uh it's gonna be pretty simple i just got a one inch rod solid all the way through pretty heavy too compared to the tube uh but the same diameter and i just went ahead and heated up and cut it in half and one thing that really helps, especially for later, is you want to heat up the end and get it into a nice point, or point-ish. And that's just so when I work on it later, I'll just heat that tip up, and that's usually the attachment point anyway. And it'll radiate the heat back without shocking the rod too much, since it's starting from a small area. There's an example of the thermal shock I keep talking about. And that's a lot of the prep work in glass blowing, taking these heavy five foot tubes and rods and cutting them down in half and half and half again. Now just to know, I'm kind of low on supplies. I would be using larger handles than seven millimeter, but that's what it, just all I have right now. Now I'll pull out the rollers. These just kind of help support the weight, especially if you need to hold something in place for a long time. And I probably actually wouldn't recommend them starting out just so that you can get more feel for the muscle memory and the flow of the glass. But later on, especially when you work for longer periods, it definitely is good to help reduce the stress on your body as much as you can. And now that it's at a pretty good uh, spherical shape, I'm going to go ahead and get the front of it really, really hot, a very white hot and smash it down onto the marble pad. And I end up with this very nice looking disc. And if you want to see that smashing process, which is really cool, make sure you check out the magnifying glass episode. That's episode two. But here I want to show you these rings that end up forming during the pressing process. It's kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of like fingerprints. And by just heating up the face, that front really, really hot, you'll end up uh, removing the rings and just making a very crystal clear surface. And that'll do it for this video. This will be a two-part episode for the glass cannon. I'll be getting the second part out tomorrow, but thank you for watching the Matt Yasa channel. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you liked the episode, leave a comment down below.